Okay, good morning to everyone, to my Chinese students. Welcome to Advanced Research Methods and the Statistics with Computer Application. I already uploaded the files needed for you to install a software to compute for the sample size. A sample size is very important so that we would be assured that the data that we would get would come from a sample that represents the population okay there is really no right or wrong sample size there is just what's enough and what's better as a sample size now i would be sharing to you how to use the g power software so i just hope you were able to install the g power software in your computers with just a simple click okay so let me share to you my screen and i'll take you through how to open and compute and even interpret the contents of the g power software so if you could see here in my screen i have this g power software i just try to open it and it's just a very simple a box like this there would be options here for the test family now this is something to do with the statistical test that you would be using of course the test decision would depend on your hypothesis and it would also depend on the variables of your study if you could browse in here we have exact tests f t tests chi square tests and z tests on the type of statistical test, these are the more specific tests to choose. You could choose from any of this depending on the type of test family. In the type of power analysis, we have many options in here, but the most common would really be like this. You don't really have a sample size yet. You would start with your research and you would be confronted with the question, how many respondents, respondents should I have for my survey questionnaire? If that's the case, you are looking for the sample size, then you would be using for a priori, compute the required sample size, okay? But in some cases, you already have your sample size. If you already have your sample size, question is how to prove to the audience, to the panelists, to other research experts that the sample size that you already have is indeed enough and it would have results that has statistical power, enough statistical power. We would be using for that case the post hoc method. This is computing the achieved power given you already have your sample size, okay? And we have also other options in here and these are considerations. What you need to consider when you think of computing for a sample size. Is your test one-tailed or two-tailed? Normally, it's two-tailed. Effect size standard error of probability and the power that you would want to achieve say for example for purposes of simulation you would have your study your study is about just like in our example the relationship between teachers performance and students performance that's your statement of the problem your main statement of the problem the hypothesis is there is no significant relationship between teachers performance and students performance that is your null hypothesis based on that sop statement of the problem the best statistical tools tool or the most appropriate statistical test to use would be correlation okay this is correlation already you need not choose anymore 
from what's in there. So just click correlation. Okay, and the type of power analysis that you would be doing is a priori since your intention is to determine the sample size. You have not yet given your survey questionnaires. You don't know yet the sample size that you would be using. So you would compute for the required sample size. And this is somehow default already. Tails normally it's two tail. So just click two. The effect size is 0.3. The standard error of probability is 0 0.05 and it should complement the power so that it could make one. Okay. And then you just try to click calculate. When you click calculate, there would be many figures in here, values, and there would be also drawings in here. Okay. Now, what does it mean? You just try to focus with the total sample size and the actual power. Meaning, given our statement of the problem, the main statement of the problem, is there a significant relationship between teacher's performance and student's performance? If that would be your SOP, the required number of respondents or your sample size is 100. 34. 134 respondents would have enough power. How could you say enough? It's because the results there would have a statistical power. The results coming from the 134 survey respondents would have a statistical power of 0.95. And normally in the social sciences, I'm talking of the social sciences, 0.85 above is okay. 0.85 above is okay. That would roughly translate to 85% confidence in your statistical results. In this case, having 134 sample size would actually yield 95% power and it's a good number. Okay. Say for example, in another situation, same SOP, same hypothesis, but you already had your survey questionnaires. It was already distributed. And what turned out, 210 were returned back to you. Therefore, you have 210 survey respondents all in all. The question, what is the statistical power of the results of your research given you have 210 respondents. So what we do is retain the test family, retain the statistical test, but you change here the type of power analysis. And I mentioned this earlier, we would be using post hoc. It's because we already have our sample size. You click in here post hoc. Okay, same figures in here, but your total sample size was 210, 210, you type it in there, and then you calculate. The power is 0.99. Same SOP, same hypothesis, different total sample size. Earlier, it was 130 something, just so that we could have a statistical power of 0.95. In our case now, it's 210. The power is better, 0.99. Therefore, what we could say is, in determining for the sample size, the more, the better. But what's important is for you to prove 
that the number, the sample size that you have is enough already to get results with statistical power or enough statistical significance. That's how you use this G power software. Now you could try actually to um, test, try other options in here, but you would be guided by your statistician. And this is very, very simple. You need not compute on your own. You need not uh, be confused as to how many your respondent should be. Try to utilize this software. There are other many softwares which are also free and downloadable and can be installed in your computers. I'm just offering this one for purposes of discussion. As of the moment, this software is still free, but there may come a time that this software would be paid already since this is a test version. So hopefully you understood the concept of computing for the sample size and it's not actually difficult. With just a few clicks only, you would get your desired sample size or if you already have your sample size, you would get data to prove that the sample size that you have is actually enough already statistically. So that ends our discussion for computing for sample size. I would have another recording and that would be focused on how to use a software package in the data analysis already. And we would be using the statistical software package for the social sciences, it's SPSS. I already uploaded also in our classroom that software wherein you need to install, it's a trial version, try to install it and hopefully it would run in your computer because if not, then it would be very hard for you to try it out, okay? So I'll be recording another one just for data analysis. In this case, I just hope that you learn from my video, you try it on your own, and then try to check whether you could follow. If you would have questions regarding this topic, kindly post them in our Google Classroom. That would be it from the Philippines of the University of Perpetual Health. Goodbye, Chinese students.